Another morning, nothing's changed. No progress, no hope. The only difference this morning is that Tara's still asleep. It's the first time I've woken up before her since we started sleeping together. I'm glad she's still sleeping. I can tell she needs it. I slip out of bed and dress silently. My next move should be heading to the shop. Sticking to routine is what keeps Evelyn off our backs. For now. The instant I start thinking about Evelyn again, I'm hit by a powerful urge to climb back into bed and wrap my arms around Tara. Hold her for a little longer. I don't. She needs her rest, and there's still some time before she leaves. Somehow. Thinking about that makes me feel even worse. I try to push the thoughts away, but her voice does that for me. Ah, uh, shit. What time is it? She's sitting up in bed and rubbing her eyes. She's still wearing her clothes from the night before, or at least the top half. But her sitting up doesn't mean she's actually awake. It's still early. You can rest more. Nah, no, nah, no, it's fine. I got this. I'm just going to spend some time in the shop so nobody comes to check in on us later today. Get some sleep. I'll be back soon. You sure? I move back to the bed and kiss her forehead before lowering her onto the, her pillow. I'm sure. I'll wake you up when I'm back. Okay, cool. Thanks, babe. I, I mean, uh, thanks. Dead silence. I know what you meant. I'm out the door before either of us can say a word. I don't want to think about that right now. I just need to get to the shop. I'm so focused on that I almost slam into Evelyn the second I step outside. No need to rush, dear. My brain jumps to panic mode. Why is she here? She's never here in the morning. Did she come for us? The door isn't shut all the way. I could run back inside. Grab Tara. Get out. I know deep down that it's pointless to try. If she wanted us dead, we'd be dead. I don't know why she's sparing us, but if she changes her mind, we won't get a warning. What do you want? Her mouth curls into a frown. Am I not supposed to take an interest in my daughter's life? I thought you had outgrown that phase. I grit my teeth. The sight of Tara's body being flung into the wall. Maddie's room and the cabin, hauntingly empty. She doesn't have the right to even pretend to be my mother. I'm not your daughter. Morgan. I flinch as she raises her voice. I hate letting her get a rise out of me, but there's too many memories making me afraid of that sound. She just sighs and her features sink. She almost looks visibly hurt. Only almost. There's still something inhuman about her expression. Something I've never been able to understand. You can be so cruel sometimes. You weren't always. When you were young, you were the sweetest thing. You would never imagine the things you say to me so casually now. I clenched my fist have to keep it together. My nails push slightly against the skin in my palm. As always, my fingers freeze before they draw blood. I'm going to work. My voice comes out as a rasp, and I cringe at the weakness of it. She puts her hand on my shoulder as I try to walk past. Work can wait, dear. I'm sure your customers will understand. I have something to show you. I thought since you were so desperate to see in my office, I could give you a little glimpse of what I keep in there. Evelyn drops her hand, her lips twisting into a sickeningly sweet smile. If you're not interested, however, I'm sure your American friend would be eager to join me. My blood freezes. I want to hit her. I want to scream at her. I'm not sure if it's fear or the curse she placed on me that keeps me rooted to the spot. 
I can't even look up at her. She knows she's one, and she always has. I can feel her eyes on me as she waits for me to follow her. The moment passes, and she makes a sound of affirmation. She turns away. Now, come with me, dear. I figure out where we're heading after a couple minutes of walking. The forest. If she's taking me in there, then this could be it. Ah, here we are. I look back to the house for what I hope isn't the last time. What's going to happen if Tara wakes up and can't find me? What if she never sees me again? Tara? I mutter her name under my breath. Some dumb, childish part of me hopes that she heard it somehow. It's better that she's not here, but I still wish she was. What was that, dear? Nothing. I ought to thank your friend. She's made motivating you so much easier. It's nice to see you caring about someone other than yourself for once. I'd almost think you were finally growing up if you weren't so stubbornly holding on to your teenage rebelliousness. I don't say anything. I keep my face blank. One, two, breathing. She pays me no mind. We walk into the forest, past the initial tree line, into the depths. At least I know where we are, or I thought I did. As we keep on walking, I realize that I don't know where we are at all. I don't recognize any of this. The trees are different. These aren't the ones I know. They aren't even the ones I saw when we started walking. I've walked this path dozens of times. There's no way I'm making a mistake. The branches blot out the sun even more than usual, and the shadows seem to bend around Evelyn. I can hear the creaking of old wood in the darkness. It almost sounds like the trees are moving. I've never seen the forest behave like this. I've never seen anything behave like this. As we walk, Evelyn keeps turning her head to glance at me, probably trying to see how scared I am. I don't let my expression waver. I won't let her in. She won't win this one. The things around me don't even look like trees anymore. They're too gnarled and rotten. They twist into shapes that should be impossible. They form walls around us as we walk, pushing us forward. I can't help drawing in on myself. It's like the whole forest is closing around us. It's getting harder to breathe. I feel like I'm about to be crushed by the forest itself. And just when I think I can't take it anymore, we break into a clearing. And in the center of the clearing is a beautiful, radiant tree. It's actually green. Real, brilliant green needles. Its trunk is so thick and sturdy that the bark makes it look armor-plated. The rich scent of pine fills the air. The shadows around us are kept at bay by a shimmering golden light. I can breathe again. Crisp, clear air fills my lungs. The awful sensations of the twisted forest are all but forgotten. I reach out my hand to it, but only reach. Something inside me tells me that I'm not supposed to touch it. That I'm not supposed to be here. What is this? She ignores me, or at least I think she does. I don't turn around to look at her. I'm too transfixed by the tree ahead of me. I don't know how long I stand there staring, but after some time, I notice the air around me change. My limbs begin to numb almost immediately. When I look back at Evelyn, she's glowing, an oily shimmer all over her body. And she's smiling at me, smiling. You were so peaceful, so calm, I can't remember another time when you were so relaxed. I hate to interrupt it, really I do. But I only have so much time to spend here. Do understand. She starts walking towards me. That's when I see the knife in her hand. I try to open my mouth to speak. I try to move my feet away from her. I can't. Completely still. 
impulse crashing. My heart hammers in my chest. Every muscle in my body is frozen. I can't even shake. This forest spirit, it's so young. As small as it is, the power within it is enough to melt the ice in this place. To draw you in. You love it so much, even though you'd only just met it moments ago. A rush of understanding fills me. The warmth, the peace in this place. A haven from the cold and we are the intruders. I always knew you were part of this forest, much more than any of the others. This confirms that. She grabs my hand and holds it up, examining my palm, running her fingers over its creases, as if it's like nothing she's ever seen before. I thought it would make you dangerous. It didn't. It made you weaker. She presses the blade to my hand. My mind screams at my body, desperately trying to get my muscles to respond. Your one chance of success, of escape, and you're weakened by it. She laughs to herself, like she knows a joke that I'm not in on. With a swift motion, she drags the knife against my palm. I stare in horror as blood trickles and pulls out from the open gash. Since you loved it so much, I wonder how it will feel for you to be the one to kill it. My strings are cut in that moment, and I fall over. The rush of sensations rush over me all at once. The pain, the cold. <coughs> I scream out, clutching my palm. I turn and try to crawl immediately, my instinct shouting at me as I fall to my knees over and over. Get up, run, run. But it's too late. Evelyn grabs my wrist so hard I feel like the bones are about to break, and she swings me around and presses my bloody palm into the forest spirit. Before I can rip my hand away, I feel a voice bursting forth from within. Pain rips forth from my chest the more I try to hold the words back. I cover my mouth with my hands and stumble back in horror. But it's too late. An unexplainable sound fills the air. A hideous groaning. I know what it is. I do. I don't want to admit it to myself, though. It's the spirit. Blackness moves up the shining green needles. The calming aura disappears completely. And it's replaced by something else. Pain. It's pain. I fall to my knees as the trunk begins to twist into itself. Bits of bark fall into the snow. The rotting blackness creeps up from its roots, and the unsteady trunk begins to sway. The needles wither and die. My head is filled with suffering. I hear a crackling then. Black tar seeps out from the bark, smelling of death. It bursts into flames. I try to hold my mouth closed. Incantations leave my throat. A voice that's mine, but yet isn't. Evelyn's standing further back now, watching the scene before her. Her face is contorted into a terrifying grin. She's enjoying this. The crackling sound grows louder. My breath catches in my chest, and out of the corner of my eyes I see Evelyn, hands outstretched. With a crap louder than thunder, the spirit's trunk splits in two. A beat of silence follows, and then I hear the screams. It comes from all around me, something crying out within the woods, a shrieking, earth-shattering wail. My heart breaks. It's not something in the forest. It is the forest. Somehow the trees around me are screaming in pain. I'm screaming now. I can barely hear myself through the shrieking vortex around me. I can't look. I bow my head still screaming as the fire burns. Even the fire feels wrong. It's cold. Freezing. Fire blooms around the tree. 
shooting high above the tree line. In one giant, blinding burst, the tree is gone. All that's left is a circle of scorched earth. The burn is more intense than anything I've ever seen. It looks like it stretches down forever. Somewhere in my heart, I know nothing will ever grow here again. The screams start to fade. I slowly take my hands from my ears. Thank you for being such a help, dear. Really. You're a monster! How funny. Your mother said the exact same thing. You really do take after her. I can't gather my thoughts enough to respond. The screams are still echoing in my mind. Never forget this day, child. In the brief time you have left, I want you to know for certain that you don't stand a chance at changing your fate. You never have. None of you ever had. And when the time comes for you to serve as my vessel, I'll make sure the next one won't either. She reaches out toward me and I prepare for the worst. But all she does is pat my head and ruffle my hair. You can find your way home, I assume? I know how much you love these woods. She gives another chuckle as she turns and walks away, heading back into the shadowy trees. She disappears into the darkness, and that's all that's left is me in the disgusting burnt circle. My mind is blank, numb with shock. Quietly, slowly, one thought begins to take form. She'll pay for this! She tried to break me for years, over and over again. I've never let her, and I'm not going to let her do it now. I don't care how powerful she is. I don't care what she did to Maddie. She's going to pay, and Tara and I are going to make sure of it. We'll destroy her, once and for all. We'll leave this place behind for good, together. And nothing's going to stop us.